Coast. It is Baller to Baller. It is TuneIn, iTunes, Radio Live. Find us online at JiggyJaguar.com. Go to the app stores. Find the Jiggy Jaguar app. It is available in both the app stores, iPod and, as I mentioned, Google Play. Get a hold of us online at JiggyJaguar.com. And, of course, we've got a brand new marketing partner with us today, Transmedia Worldwide, 25change.com. That's right, 25change.com. Check out the number two, the number five, change.com. You've been looking here, there, and everywhere, trying to provide increase in your household. Giving 25 cents at 25change.com will guarantee you weekly earnings of $2,500. Don't overthink it. Try to become familiar with it. Just get on it. Limited available positions are only 25 cents today. Check out 25change.com. That's right. You've been looking here. You've been looking here. I've been looking everywhere for it, and I can't find it. Hello? Hey, John. It's James Lowe from iHeartRadio. How are you today, my friend? Uh, all right, James. How are you? Pretty good, actually. Uh, I I wanted to get you on today because there there is a lot of news going on, and uh, one of the things is uh, the many Chinese are actually liking Trump. Uh... The tariffs, all sorts of different things. G- g- give us your thoughts on this because, uh, you know, they're they're <laughs> they shouldn't like all this. <laughs> the Chinese should not like tariffs on them. The Chinese are shouldn't be fans of the Donald, but they are. Well, um, I think um, you, can, you can't read too much into that, James. But my, my personal view is. Uh, they're they're very curious about him. Um, they they don't normally approve of people who are so straightforward. They 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 admire uh, reticent people. You know uh, you know inscrutable is is often a word that people use to describe Chinese. Um, but um, they also think that that directness sometimes connotes weakness and so i i think they find him a, a curious guy he, he certainly um doesn't talk down to them and he, he's a unique american personality from from their point of view i don't think they've run into somebody like him and and also i, I think uh, in particular the young people uh like him and um, and that's probably a positive. We've got a great guest with us today. John D. Coons is with us. He's the author of South of the Clouds. He joins us today here on Skype Audio. Now, the uh, the the tariffs. Um, w- w- more tariffs could be on the on the way. What has the impact been uh, so far? Well, I think the tariffs are uh, proving Mr. Trump's point. Uh, I think. Anytime, I don't care what the economists say, and I, I'm not a trained economist, and I, I don't pretend to, to know all the niceties that, that they study, but anytime you've got one country shipping out $500 billion worth of goods a year and the other one shipping out $100, uh, tariffs will weaken the, 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 the bigger guy. Uh, he, he's got more to lose. And I think in, I think that's what's happening, and and I think the Chinese. You've got to remember uh, the number one thing not to upset in the formula in the PRC with the the Chinese government and you know essentially the leaders that run the country is no, no chaos. They absolutely cannot handle any kind of of, of upheaval, and uh, these tariffs are threatening some of their economic foundations, and I think that's got them a whole lot of concern. And, and I think it's, it's basically uh, it's doing what Mr. Trump wants. I, th- I think he's winning this hand. 
We've got John D. Coons with us today. He joins us live here on the telephone talking a little bit about uh, his book, South of the Clouds, also about the uh, tariffs uh, that are going on over there in China. Let, let's talk a little bit about your book. Um, you operate uh, a, a, a heck of a book here. You put together uh, just an amazing, amazing book. Tell us about the writing process for this book, John. Well, th- thank you, James. Um, I, I started the book uh, a couple of years ago when I was actually operating a factory in China that resembles very much the, the center of, of kind of the operations of the protagonist in the book, uh, Jack Davis. It's a silicon smelter. And uh, I'll tell you essentially what happens. I, I like to write from events that have taken place uh, in, in my life, and, and this was one of those things. Uh, I bought into a silicon smelter down along the Burmese border with southwestern China. A silicon smelter smelts at uh, very high temperature uh, quartz with something called a carbon flux, usually charcoal, to make silicon, which we use for semiconductor chips and photovoltaic cells. And one day, while I was working with my men, I discovered that they were using my trucks, these big, huge dump trucks that normally collect the quartz and the charcoal, to smuggle jade over the border from Burma into into China. And so I wrote the book about that. And uh, what I learned is that is one of the wildest part of the parts of the world. It's it's also called the Golden Triangle, as you probably know. A uh, very lawless place, a beautiful place, and some beautiful people, but very dangerous. We've got John D. Coons with us today. He joins us live here in our broadcast, Coast to Coast and Boulder to Boulder on TuneIn, iTunes, The Mix on Tuesdays, of course, iHeartRadio as well. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, your research process and some of the different things that you put in the book because there is a lot of real life uh, real world experience in this book right well thank you well um, you know again my smelter was right there so one thing I had to do was was get over the border into Burma now when I was writing the book it was illegal for Americans to go into Burma, that's that's been uh, changed somewhat. Uh, but um, one thing I could not do is get to the jade mines in a place called Hapakan in northern Burma. Uh, I had to rely on a, a very famous gemologist, a guy named Richard Hughes, who became a friend of mine. He is uh, one of the only foreigners that's been allowed to go to that famous city. Pretty much everybody working in the jade mines in Hapakan is is a, a heroin addict, and it's like I say, a crazy lawless place. But pretty much everything else, uh, I, I did the research on the ground over a couple of years, and uh, it's a it's a fascinating area. What, for example, what I learned is when the Chinese had their civil war between the nationalists and the Chinese communists. And the communists, of course, won. And the generals, Chiang Kai-shek and the generals from the nationalist group, flew to Taiwan. Most of the enlisted men couldn't get on the planes. And so guess where they went? They went to northern Burma. And so that's why there's so many very active Chinese there running those jade mines and smuggling that jade and also trafficking uh, women and so forth. That's also why... If you're down there and you run into somebody with a Chinese passport, it's, it's not going to be a PRC passport. It's going to be a Taiwanese passport. It's also why, James, it's not to be long-winded, but it's also why the CIA main, maintained support camps there in right up through the early 60s because it was their hope that they might enlist some of these uh, disappointed Chinese nationalist soldiers to re- re- resume their fight against the communists. And of course, that was not to be. And ultimately, the CIA left, but they left some white tigers, basically renegade guys who ran uh, cocaine and heroin rings and, and other contraband, and some of them reputedly are still there. We've got 
John D. Coons with us today. He joins us live here on Skype Audio to discuss his book, South of the Clouds. And um, what kind of reactions have you been getting to the book so far? Well, uh, pe- people like it. Uh, they, they ask me how much of it is true, and pretty much all of it's true. Um, they, they also ask me, uh, you know, is, is, is this a place yet where people can go? And I say, absolutely not. Uh, you don't, you don't want to venture any place near, uh, you know, no- northern Burma. Uh, the, the area there, especially something called the Kachin State, is 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 still uh, you know there's still a, a a civil war going on there between the Burmese generals called the Tatmadaw and the Kachin Independent Army. So that's that's as, as uh, it's not a place for uh, rest and relaxation just yet. We've got John D. Coons with us today. He joins us live here in our broadcast. And uh, are you working on a uh, another book? Yes, sir, I am. Uh, uh, I, I, I was lucky enough to be in China doing business, uh, running a private equity fund there from 2006 to 2014. Uh, I then uh, focused my, my business uh, attention on uh, a gold mining business on an island in the South Pacific called Bougainville. Uh, Bougainville's in the Solomon Islands. It's right next to uh, a place called Guadalcanal, which some of your listeners may recognize because it was a source of many air, land, and sea battles in World War II. But uh, Bougainville was home of the world's largest and most profitable gold and copper mine from 1972 to 1989. And then uh, they had a, a, a big civil war over that mine. And closed it, but now uh, Bougainville's open for business, and I have a gold mining business on Bougainville, and uh, it's, uh, as people say, it's at the end of the world, but uh, it's a very interesting place. We've got John D. Coons with us today. He joins us live here in our broadcast, and uh, John, before we let you go, uh, what do you have coming up? Well, uh, that, that, the novel on Bougainville uh, should be ready by, uh, I would say, uh, next spring. So that'll probably be the next thing I'll have on the book stand, soon. Good stuff. Well, I appreciate it, my friend. Have yourself a wonderful weekend, and uh, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me, James. Always a pleasure. Have a great weekend yourself. Appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. There Thank goes you. John D. Coons. Mm-hmm. We are going to take a time out. When we come back, we are going to wrap things up here on our big broadcast. We've got more coming up.